Now that we're back in the office, we're hard at work testing this year's heavily anticipated TVs. Today, we'll be reviewing the LG C C10, the successor to the very popular C9, and let's see if anything has changed. Hi, I'm Ryan, a lead tester at ratings.com, where we help people find the best product for their needs. Remember to subscribe to our channel or check out our website to see the hundreds of reviews on TVs, soundbars, and more. In this video, we'll start by looking at the design and inputs of the C10 and then move on to our test results for the picture quality. We'll also look at the motion handling, input lag, and sound. Throughout this video, we'll compare the C10 to its predecessor from last year, the C9. We'll also take a look at competing models from other manufacturers to get a sense of where the 2020 model sits in the field. We purchased the 55-inch C10, and it's also available in other sizes, 48, 65, and 77 inches. We expect these other sizes to have very similar picture quality and performance, but obviously as sizes get bigger, you'll likely need a larger TV stand or more durable wall mount. The design of the C10 is almost identical to last year's C9, and I can't really tell the two apart. The stand is the same, the back is the same, and any measured difference between them is most likely due to testing margin of error. You can tell which one is which when the TV is on, due to the new settings user interface we'll look at in a bit. But when it's off, they're virtually identical. The borders of the TV are very thin all around the screen, and the wide stand supports the TV well. Keep in mind, the stand is deeper than most TVs at just under 10 inches, but it should fit most entertainment cabinets. The controls on the TV are the same as the other LGs we've tested so far and consists of a single button below the center of the TV. Since all controls are housed within a single button, it relies on different series of long or short presses to activate different commands, which can be a pain. You also can't control a lot of features with it, so you're better off always using the fantastic Magic Remote, which we'll talk more about later. When we move around to the side, you'll see that the TV is thin and looks good. The thin panel mounted on the plastic housing of the internals is a familiar design for LG OLEDs over the past few years, and it looks and feels premium. It will be close to the wall when mounted, which is great. The rear of the TV looks virtually identical to last year's C9, with some of your inputs facing sideways and others straight back. This is a bit of a pain and can cause issues when trying to wall mount. All of the available inputs are the same as the C9 from last year. You've got four HDMI 2.1 ports, three USB ports, one digital optical audio out, one ethernet input, one tuner input, one 3.5 millimeter out, and a composite in for legacy devices with the adapter included in the box. eARC is also available on this set, just like last year. The cable management is nice, as all cables get routed through the back of the stand for a clean look. Now, we'll move on to the picture quality. As always, check out our website for an updated comparison with new TVs as we buy and test them. First, we'll start with the contrast ratio. The contrast ratio is the relative brightness of white versus dark areas in a scene. It's generally considered one of the most important aspects of picture quality, as a high contrast ratio helps dark scenes to appear more detailed without details getting lost in the gray. As with all other OLEDs, the pixels are self-emissive and are controlled individually. This means they can turn off individual pixels to give pure black, which translates to the TV having an effectively infinite contrast ratio, since it can go from pure bright white to pure black. Next, let's look at the gray uniformity performance. Our gray uniformity test checks for issues with the panel where different pixels are all supposed to display the exact same color, but may not. This can result in distracting areas known as the dirty screen effect, which can be noticeable during intense movement, such as while watching sports or playing video games. The LG C10 performs great, with no real distracting DSE or vignetting. This is similar to most other OLEDs, and like most other OLEDs, there is visible horizontal and vertical banding in near black scenes. It is very hard to notice this though, as it is only visible in very dark rooms in very dark scenes. We wouldn't expect this to be an issue for most people in real world viewing. The black uniformity is perfect, as each pixel can be turned off individually. It's worth noting that gray uniformity can vary between units, even of the same model. So yours may perform differently than ours. If you come across a panel that doesn't correspond to our results, let us know in the comments below. Another advantage of self-emissive pixels are the viewing angles. The light emitted from the pixels is dispersed at an almost 180 degrees from the screen, which allows for a fairly even distribution of colors and black level even at an angle. But of course, it's not perfect. 
Good viewing angles can be important if you watch TV with a large group of people or have a living room set up where you don't look at the TV head on. The C10 has great viewing angles, and the viewing angles are very similar to the C9 and better than LED TVs such as the Q90R. Although the numbers are a little different, the viewing angle results are actually extremely similar between the C9 and C10. These number differences can be caused by panel variants. If we look at the pixel photo of these two TVs as well, we see the exact same subpixel structure. Coupled with the viewing angle performance, it leads us to believe that the units we have have the same panel. There are other panels on the market, so your C10 or C9 might have a different one. We don't expect any noticeable difference between these panels though. If your TV is in a bright room, good reflection handling is important to cut out the amount of glare you get from lights or the sun. The LG C10's reflection handling is very good. Considering most OLED TVs on the market use an LG panel, the C10 performs extremely similarly to OLEDs like last year's C9 or the Sony AAG. It has a glossy finish that cuts light and gives clear, defined reflections, which can be less distracting than stretching the diffused light across the screen. It's almost as good as the Samsung Q90R's reflection handling, but the anti-glare coating on the Samsung is the best we've seen. SDR peak brightness refers to how bright your screen can get when watching most standard, non-HDR content. A brighter screen will help your TV overcome reflections and glare, and this TV can get bright. It gets about as bright as last year's LG C9 at around 460 nits at its peak. This is brighter than the Sony AAG, but LED TVs like the Samsung Q90R outperform OLEDs in brightness. This is a clear advantage of LED TVs. The brightness of the C10 depends on the window size or how much of the screen is showing a bright image. As the window size increases, the brightness decreases due to the auto brightness limiter circuitry. You can choose to disable this feature by turning off the peak brightness setting, but the brightness will drop to around 300 nits. If you watch a lot of HDR content from services like Netflix or Amazon Prime Video, then the ability to produce brighter regions of the image is important to produce impactful highlight detail. This is one of the most noticeable reasons why some TVs seem to really pop with HDR content, while others don't. The C10 performs well with HDR content, producing just over 800 nits in some scenes. It's enough brightness to impress most people, but some enthusiasts may be disappointed as it can't get bright enough to show the details from movies that are mastered at over 1,000 nits. Bright LED TVs like the Samsung Q90R have more impressive HDR bright highlight performance, as that set gets closer to 1,500 nits in its most accurate picture mode. Also important for HDR is the ability to take advantage of the wider color spaces that content can be mastered in. The C10 color gamut is very wide, almost completely covering the P3 color space and around 75% of the Rec 2020 color space, so HDR colors will be rich and vibrant. The only limitation here is that the C10 can't produce extremely bright colors, but with a perfect contrast ratio, it can display dark, saturated colors. The last thing I wanted to touch on before moving on to the motion handling of the C10 is the pre-calibration. Our pre-calibration measurements are important because they show how accurate the picture is out of the box. If a TV's color temperature, white balance, or color delta error is far off from what it should be, your picture might not look as great as it could. The C10 has a great pre-calibration, with a slightly warm color temperature which might cast a minute warm tinge over colors. Like other OLED TVs, the C10 may have the risk of burn-in after displaying long periods of static content. It uses an organic compound to emit light, which degrades with usage. You can see our video series link below for an investigation into this issue. However, we don't expect it to be a problem for most people with changing content. If you watch a lot of sports or play a lot of video games, motion handling may be the most important aspect of the TV to you. Like most high-end TVs, the C10 uses a 120Hz panel. If you're a fan of the soap opera effect, 24, 30, and 60 frames per second content can be interpolated up to 120 frames per second, and the implementation here looks good. We don't evaluate this objectively at the moment though. On to the response time. Response time is an average of the time it takes for the TV's pixels to transition from one color to the next. The C10 has a near perfect response time, like all other OLEDs. This is great for fast moving motion content such as sports and video games. Unfortunately for low frame rate content, this also means there is no blur to smooth between frames of low frame rate movies. This results in jarring motion when displaying long, slow panning shots in movies, which can be corrected by enabling motion interpolation. To help reduce persistence blur, the C10 has an optional black frame insertion feature. This can be enabled by selecting the OLED Motion Pro setting of the True Motion setting in Expert Dark Room Picture Mode. This results in a clearer image with less persistence blur. 
The C10 has a very good BFI performance with 60 hertz content. The C10, like the C9 and Samsung Q90R, support variable refresh rate technology for tear-free gaming. They all can use the HDMI Forum VRR standard, and unlike the Samsung, the C10 supports NVIDIA G-Sync VRR and is compatible with NVIDIA's newer graphics cards. The VRR range is from 40 to 120 hertz. To enable VRR, game mode must be enabled. At the moment, FreeSync is not supported, but it might be added with the software update. We'll pin a comment to the video if this changes. Now onto the input lag. When using this TV in game mode, it reduces the input lag of the TV, and for most signals, it's around 14 milliseconds at 60 hertz. This isn't much of a change since last year, but it's still very good for a 120 hertz TV at 60 hertz. At 120 hertz, the input lag is closer to 7 milliseconds, with the exception of 4K 120, which is about 11 and a half milliseconds. Let's move on to the smart features on LG's WebOS platform. Updated this year to version 5, it hasn't changed much since last year besides some visual changes and is still very easy to use. There are a few smart features carried over from last year, including the home dashboard feature that can interact with Internet of Thing devices, similar to the Samsung SmartThings feature. The LG Content Store also has one of the widest selections of apps available. The Magic Remote is also the same as last year and is very easy to use. It has a pointer to easily type and select things on screen and a convenient scroll wheel to browse things to watch in your favorite apps. It still includes the quick launch buttons that allow you to quickly open Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, where you can view movies and TV shows in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. With TVs getting thinner and thinner, TV speakers generally have been pushed to the wayside in favor of other design features. Buyers of high-end models like the C10 also often look towards sound solutions like dedicated speaker systems and soundbars to complement their set. But I'm happy to report if you don't have the space or funds for additional speakers, the internal speakers of the C10 have surprising depth. Its low frequency extension is better than the C9. Though it's still not able to produce any rumble or thump in its bass, it does have some punch to it. It also produces clear dialogue and can get pretty loud. Overall, the C10 is an amazing TV for most uses. It performs similarly to last year's C9 in many aspects and is a better option for gamers who use the VR and BFI features. The C10 also has an updated smart interface. Most other differences between the two can be due to panel variants, so you should go with whichever you can get for a better price. If you want a brighter alternative for impactful HDR or even better bright room performance, the Samsung Q90R or Q90T would be great choices as well. So that's it. What do you think of the 2020 LG C10? Is it worth the upgrade over last year's C9? Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to our latest test results first. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So, if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.